just yesterday we were reporting on that the deep state was taking on Trump and Trump was taking on the deep state. We were telling you about this internal tremors or these internal tremors, the warfare that's going on. I, I title it that way if you haven't noticed on YouTube because I cannot put the word war or conflict or anything relating to that on YouTube. Otherwise, YouTube just kind of censors it. So that's why I put like shaking or tremors or something other, you know, like that. Uh, I don't mean to do it that way and I don't really want to, but I kind of have to. And so that's that's where we're at with that. But anyways, I want to continue on that because a lot's coming out today and yesterday, still from yesterday, about what's going on with the deep state. Or in other words, the fifth column. Or in other words, the intelligence agencies. Trump is going to review, or an ally of Trump is going to review these deep state agencies, or these intelligence agencies. And this, of course, is only going to further provoke and bring about the war that we are seeing right now. You thought what, what's been taking place was recently was really bad? We haven't seen anything yet. A lot more misinformation, a lot more disinformation is going to come out. A lot of propaganda, of course, they're roughly the same thing, but flat-out disinformation. And, of course, propaganda is where they can switch in, uh, or bias. Let's call it bias. A lot more bias is going to come out where it's going to twist the actual truth. It's going to be half-truth and things like that. And a lot more of that stuff is going to take place. And, of course, we keep seeing the tweets from Trump that are attacking the New York Times and CNN and so on and so forth. And you know what? The fake stream media is in all-out warfare against the current regime in the White House. But I will tell you one thing. We also have an article uh, that we're going to go over here in a minute that's also against Trump that brings about some serious questions. President Trump is planning to ask a member of his Economic Advisory Council to lead a review of the U.S. intelligence community, the New York Times reported on, on Wednesday. According to the newspaper, Stephen Feinberg, a co-founder of Cerebrus, Capital Management has informed his company, the company's shareholders, that he is currently considering a move to join the Trump administration. Feinberg also maintains strong ties to top Trump officials, including Chief Strategist Stephen Bannon and Senior Advisor Jared Kushner, who is also President Trump's son-in-law. A lot of the left is calling Stephen Bannon the um, shadow president. Just why I wanted to note that real quick. I don't know why. I just felt like I needed to note that. But anyways, both officials declined to comment to the New York Times report. The top intelligence officials told the Times they fear that the businessman is being prepped for a position within the intelligence community, according to the newspaper, or according to the paper. Feinberg's only national security experience stems from his company's involvement with a private security company and two gun manufacturers. The possible review of intelligence agencies comes in the wake of Trump's renewed feud with the intelligence community over leaks that led to the ousting of National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. From intelligence papers um, are being leaked, things are being leaked, it's criminal action, it's a criminal act, and it's been going on for a long time before me. But now it's really going on, Trump said Wednesday. The real scandal here is that classified information is illegally given out by intelligence like candy. Very un-American, the president also tweeted. House Oversight Committee Chairman Rep. Jason Chaffetz uh, and the Chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, uh, Bob, Goodlatte, Bob Goodlatte, on Wednesday formally asked the Justice Department's inspection, Inspector General uh, to further investigate the leaks. Of course, a lot of leaking is going on. It's opposition. That's what Trump was going to call it. WikiLeaks releases documents on alleged CIA spying on French presidential candidates. Anti-secrecy organization WikiLeaks released a set of documents allegedly showing CIA espionage on candidates in France, France's 2012 presidential elections. The seven pages of documents appear to be classified orders for intelligence operatives to gather information regarding candidates' political strategies and internal communications. WikiLeaks release... Um, of the documents comes amid growing tensions between Trump and the intelligence community over the leaks of classified information that have portrayed people close to Trump in a negative light. And of course, you can see the uh, documents right here. Uh, I will leave this link at christiantruther.com slash news. Make sure you check that out. All major French political parties were targeted for infiltration by the CIA's human, Hugh, H-U-M-I-N-T, an electronic 
S-I-G-I-N-T, spies in seven months leading up to France's 2012 presidential election, a press release from WikiLeaks State. Now, of course, um, France also just came out and they were saying Russia stay out of our elections. But it looks like Russia is not the only problem who's been meddling in elections. It looks like the CIA has had a fair amount of meddling in uh, external elections or in foreign elections. It's almost like the uh, supposed journalists have forgotten how dirty the CIA is. Oh no, they're all in cahoots with, or cahoots with, and they're all working with each other now. You see, you have Jeff Bozos, or Bezos, as from the uh, owner of Amazon, who owns the Washington Post, but somehow is able to have a $600 million contract with the CIA at the same time. You'd think that would be a conflict of interest. No, nope. uh-uh. Putin says Russian and U.S. intelligence agencies should restore ties. Russian President Vladimir Putin said on Thursday it was in uh, the interest of both Russia and the U.S. to restore communications between the respective intelligence agencies. It's in everyone's interest to resume dialogue between the intelligence agencies of the United States and other members of NATO, Putin said, addressing Russia's Federal Security Service, FSB. It's absolutely clear that in the, that in the area of counterterrorism, all relevant governments and international groups should work together. Uh, now, of course... We'll see how they responded. U.S. Defense Secretary James Mattis rejects military collaboration with Russia about an hour ago. U.S. President Donald Trump's defense secretary says he does not see the conditions for military collaboration with Russia in a blow to Moscow's hopes of repairing ties with the United States f uh, following Mr. Trump's election. We are not in a position right now to collaborate on a military level, but our political leaders will engage and try to find common ground, James Mattis told reporters, r reporters, reporters after talks at NATO headquarters in Brussels. General Mattis, Mad Dog Mattis, comments appear to nullify repeated suggestions by Mr. Trump during his election campaign of the possibility of joint action against Islamic State militants. His blunt rejection came after Russian President Vladimir Putin called for increased intelligence cooperation with the U.S. and NATO, and it makes such coordination less likely, at least in the near future. General Mattis followed his dismissal with the sharp assessment of Russia's alleged election meddling, saying there was very little doubt that they have either interfered or they have attempted to interfere in a number of elections in the, dem in the democracies. His comments raised questions about the Trump administration's policies toward Russia. As a candidate, Mr. Trump repeatedly praised Mr. Putin, saying he wanted a new era of cooperation with Moscow. Ties between Mr. Trump's team and Russia came out of the spotlight this week with the resignation of National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. Now, of course, we see a lot of sparks flying everywhere. But here is a, a very interesting one. Top Donald Trump aide defends wearing metal linked to Hungarian Nazi sympathizers. Really? Sebastian Gorka, president's deputy assistant, denies anti-Semitism, despite metal being linked to ruler who said, for all my life, I have been an anti-Semite. Excuse me. Donald Trump's deputy assistant has angrily denied being anti-Semitic after he was spotted wearing a military medal associated with Hungarian Nazi sympathizers. Sebastian Gorka, who is of Hungarian descent, but was born and raised in the UK, was pictured wearing the controversial badge at an inaugural ball for Mr. Trump and several other events. According to the Loeb Log blog, the medal was given to Mr. Gorka's father by the group uh, Vetsi Rend, meaning Order of Heroes, that consisted of supporters of Mike Miklos Horthy, the former ruler of Hungary, who collaborated with the Nazis during World War II. The U.S. State Department lists the group as being directed by Nazi Germany. Horthy, who served as regent of the Kingdom of Hungary between 1920 and 1944, was a self-declared hater of Jews. In 1940, he wrote, Concerning the Jewish problem, for all my life I've been anti-Semite. Um, an anti-Semite. I have never had contact with Jews. I have considered it intolerable that here in Hungary everything, every factory, bank, large fortune, business, theater, press, commerce, etc. should be in Jewish hands and that the Jew should be the image reflected of Hungary, especially abroad. To replace the Jews who have everything in their hands requires a generation at least. 
Despite the controversial history of the medal, Mr. Gorka said he wrote it in memory of his family and the suffering they endured. He said his father has been tortured and imprisoned by Hungarian communists in the late 1940s after he founded underground organizations of pro-democracy, anti-communists, to work about the Soviet dictatorship. Now, here's the real question. This is the article I was mentioning earlier uh, that, that this is the supposed attack on Donald Trump. Anti-communists. Now, of course, we'd have to really dig in and uncover what exactly was going on at this era and, of course, who Sebastian Gorka is and how much, really, his history is tied to, the, to, the, to Nazi Germany or to the Nazis. But we also know that anything to do with being anti-communists who is ever... Uh, let, me, let me rephrase that. Any organization or person who is connected to Trump that is anti-communism is under fire right now and they're being called anti-Semitic. So obviously this needs to be looked into more. In a video released by far-right website Breitbart News, he said in 1979 my father was awarded a decoration for his resistance to dictatorship and although he passed away 14 years ago, I, I wear that medal in remembrance of what my family went through and what it represents today to me as an American. The medal reminds me of what they suffered under the Nazis and under the communists, he said. I am a proud American now and I wear that medal now and again. Why? To remind myself where I come from or came from. What my parents suffered under both the Nazis and communists and to help me in my work today because as far as I'm concerned, groups like the Islamic State, like Al-Qaeda, they're just another kind of totalitarian. They're not communists. They're not uh, Nazis, but they will enslave or kill you if you disagree with them. That's my story. Mr. Gorka reportedly uh, has his own allegiance to Vietze Rend. He has been known to sign his name, including on his Ph.D. Uh, disseration, as Sebastian L.V. Gorka. Experts have said that the initials L.V. are used by those granted membership of the order and when they die by their oldest son. Before joining Mr. Trump's team, Mr. Gorka worked as a professor at the Institute of World Politics in Washington and is a national security editor of Breitbart. He was arrested in January 2016 after trying to board a plane with a 9mm pistol charged with a weapons offense and is set to appear before a judge later this month. Obviously, there's a lot going on, and we know that Steve Bannon was under fire for supposedly being anti-Semitic. It seems like they want to call Breitbart anti-Semitic. And, of course, there's a solid reason for why they're doing that. They're trying to make the conservative identity look fascist or look like the Nazis. Because then you have the other side thinking that they're doing the right thing, attacking the fascists when they're being led by fascists and communists and people who really will totally, totally take over and give up our, all of our freedoms. That's bad. There are two evils at play here. Take note. To get the latest news, go to christiantruther.com slash news. You will not want to miss what we produce in this next exclusive. We're going to tie so many pieces together and expose so many, so much of what's going on and the real war that's been going on for a very, very long time. It's been like just subtly in the background and many have failed to notice it or many to expose it. You won't want to miss it. Make sure you check it out. Go to christiantruther.com slash info to find out more information. God bless and carry on.